Welcome everyone to this base making tutorial. The bases that you see now were made mostly with free things or some stuff that you might find at your home. I wanted to touch a little bit on this topic as making bases is one of if not the most fun thing for me. There is a lot of space for failure and very often when a mistake is made we get an unexpected but cool looking design. All of the clips are accelerated to 400% of normal speed. If you want to see the real-time footage, just slow the video to 0.25 speed in the clip display menu in the right down corner. Enjoy! Let's go through some of the things used today. The process itself is very organic and I added extra stuff to the bases that will be shown later. We all have lots of bases and I enjoy giving them a second life, like those in the example. Now this box contains normal dirt. Remember to cook it to get rid of all of the bacteria. The second box contains sand. These are things that can be found in any forest or park. Here we have some moss and various stones. Here we see cork bark, cork coasters and twigs. This box contains pieces of rubber pipes, and extracted electronic pieces from dead devices. This is porridge for children. Here we see red tea leaves, blended oatmeal, coarse grinded salt, regular salt, and some green tea leaves. I always start with preparing the bases and making the edges smooth. 800 grit sanding paper or higher will do the job perfectly. Here I stick the bases to corks with double sided tape. Now it is time to choose some bits for one of the bases that will have a slight industrial or post apocalyptic finish. I glue all of the pieces using super glue. Normal PVA glue will be the perfect for things like dirt or sand. It's very cheap and easy accessible. You don't need super glue. Just remember that if you use a synthetic brush or any kind of brush, you have to clean it afterwards after using the glue. I unfortunately forgot and sometime later the brush was almost destroyed.
This is the result after a few hours. If you want to add an extra protective layer to any kind of basing material just use watered down PVA glue. The drying time will be long but at the end it will be hard as rock and nothing should fall off. Many unbearable hours later. Alright, so the base is dried overnight and now we can prime them. I want to show that this process can be cheap and therefore I will prime them with some primer and a brush. You don't even need a primer paint in this case. Any kind of base paint should be fine. Of course it will be easier and faster with a spray can or an airbrush. This step is not mandatory but I always like a zenith because it helps me to understand what and how should be painted. I am just dry brushing some grey paint over a black paint, leaving just the lowest parts totally black.
I do the same here with an off-white paint. After the, this process is done, the bases are ready for painting. Just have a look that I am not using any kind of special dry brush brush for this, but an old base paint citadel brush that had the hair cut straight to imitate a dry brush. Let's now see how to make such a marshy or swampy base. I will be using the Skeleton Hard Contrast Paint for my base color. Afterwards there will be a dry brush of Averland Sunset and Flash Kids Yellow. The contrast paint is dry and we can do the dry brushing. What I am doing now is putting a little bit of PVA glue with a barbecue stick onto some places where I will add additional layers of sand.
The only thing left is to paint the rocks and the base rooms. The grass tufts are not needed but I always add them as they blend perfectly with almost all bases. Now we will do a plain forest base. The contrast paint used here is Dark Angel's Green. At this point I thought it will look too plain, so I added two extra contrast paints, Celestrium Blue and Imperial Fist. The contrast paint is dry and now you can add anything you have to make them look like a green field or a part of a forest. You don't need to paint the bits you collected. Nature makes perfect mixes and colors by itself. If you don't have a specific base in mind that is supposed to tell a specific story, then skip painting it. First I dry brushed the rocks. They will not be the focus of attention and don't need much work. Afterwards it's just gluing twigs, cork, bark, shredded moss and tea leaves. Of course don't forget to paint the rim of the base.
let's have a look on how to paint a wasteland base. The contrast paint used is Basilo Canon Grey. Be very generous with it. Just try not to paint the skeleton head. The metallic paints used here are Dur Aluminium and Dark Aluminium. As the grey paint on my plastic palette was dry and I had still a wet black and ivory, I mixed them to get a grey paint. I dry brushed the whole base including the bits with the grey and ivory. Then it was skeleton horde contrast paint for the skull. Try using a precise brush for the metallics. We don't want to get any metallic paint on the base itself. I was definitely out of ideas on how to paint the base and wanted to try some stuff. So I pulled some of the shades and washes I have. For example, Nuln Oil, Agrix Urge Shade, Hexrat Freelame, I think this is how you pronounce it, and Drakenhof Night Shade. I used some ivory paint to make highlights on the skull. At this point I was very impatient so I painted the rims black. Normally you should wait for the washes to dry, but I was going for a very messy and blended effect and started highlighting the metallics very early. The little Necron spider got some edge highlights and fluorescent red.
The base was too plain for me, so I added some brown grass tufts and glued a wire of cam. Alright, a snowy base right now. The contrast paint used here is Agorist Dunes. After the contrast paint was dry, I did a dry brush of two different types of blue color. You can see me here adding coarse grinded salt and Himalayan salt to the base. And why not? They make for very nice crystals. What I have here is just regular baking flour. It will serve us in this example, but the whiter the material the better if we are to imitate snow. Take some of the flour you have or artificial snow and mix it with the PVA glue till you get a soft blob. Put it then on the base in the places where you want to have your snow. Now sprinkle some salt over the mixture. Paint the rocks, add a grass tuft if you want, and then paint the rims and you're ready to go.
Now what do you guys think about those bases? They are very cheap to make and do not require a lot of skills. Are they perfect? By any means no, but they're good enough. What ideas do you have or use? Please comment them under the video. Don't forget to share, like and leave a comment under the video. And let's see you in the next one. Bye!